This video is going to show how to create a shape file and add data to it by tracing aerial imagery in QGIS. And so to do this, we need an image. And in other videos, I've showed uh, how to stream in uh, imagery from ArcGIS Online into QGIS. I'm not using that imagery in this video because it's actually against the ArcGIS Online terms of use to digitize and trace objects off of uh, its streaming imagery in any program that's not ArcGIS. So we need to get imagery from somewhere else. And uh, thankfully, it's it's easy to get that from the government. So I'm going to go to the national map downloader. Uh, if you search for that, you'll it'll just pop right up. And this is a site from USGS where you can get all kinds of data, elevation data, um, hydrology data, um, and also imagery. So what I'm going to do is just zoom in to the place where I will be tracing data and where I want to get an image. It's going to be this part of Ellensburg, Washington out by the uh, this uh, interchange with Highway 97. And uh, I can check on this imagery, NAEP Plus, and search for images in this area. Um, this is a program uh, where aerial imagery is taken during growing season um, throughout the country. And if you hover over these, it will show you the footprints that are covered. This is the one I want. So you can see how it, the interchange highlighted in gray. That's the area covered by the image. So I can just click the download link and I'm going to save this uh, in a folder which I've created uh, for the data here. So once this image is downloaded, I can go into QGIS and I'm going to add uh, through my data source manager raster data and just browse to that um, data set. There it is. And if I was going to use this for other purposes or I had a lot of these images, I might make the names a little more user friendly, but this will serve our purpose as well. So here's this image uh, and can zoom in down here and look at this interchange. Uh, this isn't the highest resolution, but it will definitely, it will do for what we're doing here today, which is just practicing um, tracing some of these uh, buildings and roads uh, and making a new, new shapefile data from that. So uh, how do I make these new vector layers that will allow me to trace this? Uh, I'm going to uh, make sure, first of all, in QGIS, if you right click, Make sure the digitizing toolbar is turned on. Uh, you'll then see um, some of these tools here. Uh, a lot of them are grayed out because I don't have a vector layer in here that I'm editing yet. Um, but if you click new shapefile layer, you can make a new shapefile. I'm going to dump this in that uh, folder where I was working, uh, where I put the image. So I'll just go ahead and throw some uh, shapefiles in here. This one I'm going to call buildings. And the geometry type, I'm going to set to polygon. That's important here because uh, buildings have an area. And I will also be choosing the coordinate system for this. I'm just going to use the same coordinate system as the NAEP image. When I added this to QGIS, you can see that it's using EPSG3857. That's a coordinate system code here uh, for this kind of pseudo Mercator <laughs> projection. If you don't see this in your little drop down list, just go to the this button. Uh, with projections and filter for 3857 it will uh, pop right up down here. Uh, this isn't the ideal uh, coordinate system for some things uh, like measurement and analysis or visualization but it is okay for just tracing uh, vector features like this so we'll go with it since that's what uh, this image is already using. Now uh, we need to decide what columns will be in the attribute table. We can add some columns here. Um, so I'm going to put um, a couple of, of, of attributes here. One of them might be the name of the building if it has a name and that's going to be text uh, that I can fill in and uh, but there's other data that might be numbers for example the number of floors or stories in the building and that would be a whole number uh, maybe something like the building owner most vector data sets have a lot of fields like this and they're defined at the at the, the time where you set this up so uh, notice that the length field, so if I want the owner to have a, a length of more than 10 characters, I need to I need to boost this here. The other string or text field that I added 
it had a length of 80. That's a little more useful if there's a long name. Okay, so now I've got this buildings shape file here, but it doesn't have anything in it. I need to edit it and trace it. So I click this pencil and notice that a few more of these tools become available. And I'm going to choose this one to add a polygon feature. Let's go ahead and trace this building. So I'm just going to click carefully on each corner of the roof, and you might see a shape start appearing as I do that. The roof kind of sticks out there. And then when I'm done, I'm going to right click. And when I right click, then all of these uh, attribute fields become available for me to fill in. Um, I'll just give this a unique identifier. Um, let's give it a name. Um, maybe it's a dentist's office. Uh, number of stories. Let's say that it's two stories. And there we go. So I guess the owner one maybe didn't take. I don't know if that uh, that field saved when I created the file, but this this will do for our demonstration here. Uh, so there is our shape, and now it has attributes in it. Uh, I can trace other buildings here. I'm just going to kind of generalize the roof shape just for demonstration. Okay, maybe this is the uh, idea of one, and uh, this is somebody's coffee shop, and maybe it's one story. Okay, um, and so I can go along uh, tracing buildings like that. Now, uh, it, it's important here uh, to know that these are not saved automatically. So these edits need to be saved. And you don't save them by pressing this Save button. This Save Project button up here is for the QGIS project, which just contains the layers and the colors and things that you're using in your project. If you want to actually save the edits to your shape file, you need to click this button down here, Save Layer Edits. Um, and if you don't do this, you're going to lose the work you did. So um, let's do that. I'm going to stop editing now by clicking this pencil again. Let's make a new shape file and trace some roads here. Let's see how we would do that. Uh, similar procedure. So we click new shape file layer. Um, I'm going to dump it in the same place here, but I'll just call it roads. And this one, instead of polygons, is going to hold lines. It's important to not forget this step here, or you'll get the wrong kind of thing uh, coming out of your um, when you try to start digitizing. Uh, I'll set this to 3857 again as the coordinate system. And, uh, you know, for roads, we could add, definitely want to add a name field as text data. And um, we could also add like a surface type. Maybe when I made that owner field, I wonder if I forgot to click add to fields list. I've had that happen before where I set it all up here and then I forget to add. So don't forget to do that for the fields you want to add. Okay, and to edit this roads shape file, we're gonna make sure it's highlighted on the left. Just to review, we click the pencil, and now we have this add line feature. And uh, it's sort of the same procedure. I'm just gonna hold down my middle mouse button here to pan. Um, let's trace this road right here. So I'm gonna click along the road. As it goes around a curve, I'm gonna click a little more often so I can capture that curve. Vector data is basically just connecting the dots. So if you want to make a curve, you got to put a lot of dots to give that impression of a curve. Uh, when it's straight, you don't want to put lots of dots because then your line kind of zigzags. So this is a straighter area. I'm just going to put fewer vertices in there. And I'll right click when I'm done. So I can give this a unique identifier, um, a name, if you're familiar with uh, Allensburg. This is Dollar Way Road. And maybe we say it has a surface that's paved. Uh, this is very hard to see, so we could try to set up a style where it's easier for me to see those roads. Here's a bright yellow. This is fine. I could also um, edit the symbol and make it a little thicker uh, if I want. So maybe I'll bump the width up a bit. And uh, I can see this road here. Now, let's say that uh, I want to uh, digitize some unpaved roads, maybe something like this little driveway. You have to be careful when you're doing uh, things that connect because uh, no matter how closely I try to click right onto this road, I'm going to miss it if I zoom in. Uh, I'm either going to overshoot or undershoot. And it's important when we make things like road networks to get them well connected. 
um, so that um, eventually if we want to do things with that data set like uh, network uh, based routing um, we know where we can make turns from one road onto another so all of that uh, goes to say that it's important to actually snap this new line onto the existing line and to do this in QGIS we're going to right click and turn on the snapping toolbar and click this little magnet and uh, this will ensure that uh, when I go to um, add a new feature here that it will uh, snap onto any vertex that I've placed. So you can see as I hover over this turned purple, uh, that's where a vertex is. I could snap onto that. Now I actually want to snap onto anywhere on this line. So I need to go down to the uh, open the snapping options that was right off the second button here. And instead of uh, snapping on vertex, I'm going to snap on any part of the segment. This will allow me to snap to more parts of this. So as I hover over any part of this line, um, I can snap my new road on there. And that's what I'm going to do here. So um, let me just click on this and start digitizing this little driveway. Right click and uh, to finish. Uh, I don't know the name of this road. I don't think it has a name. So I'm going to leave that blank. And it's unpaved. And then let me do another little driveway here. This one kind of winds around back here. Uh, right click to finish. I'll give it another uh, ID. I don't know the name of this one. This is unpaved. I don't think it has a name. So now I've got a couple roads made and I could continue working here and digitize uh, the whole town if I wanted to uh, trace those roads myself. I would need to know the names of the uh, the streets and their characteristics that might require some field visits to verify whether things are paved or unpaved or uh, cross-checking with other imagery and other data sources. So that's all part of uh, creating new data. So let me make sure I save these edits and I'm going to turn off editing. Now the uh, last thing I can do, let's look at the stuff I made. I'm going to turn off the image and you can see the stuff I digitized. Let's symbolize the roads based on the pavement type. So you can see now uh, that the hard work I did putting in those attributes is going to pay off. So if I go to the properties on these roads, uh, I can symbolize them and, and categorize them based on the surface type. And I'm going to click classify here. And you'll see paved, unpaved, and unclassified. So let's turn off this one with no value. And I'll right click, uh, whoops, and change the color of the paved roads. Let's make those like some kind of grayish, dark grayish color. And then uh, unpaved, I'm going to right click here and change that color. Now let's make it like a brown. Okay, and uh, you can see how these uh, attributes that I selected uh, are now being used to uh, symbolize. Uh, the different features that I made. And so this was just an overview of how to create a new shapefile in QGIS and how to uh, trace imagery to digitize or uh, create uh, new features uh, in both uh, polygon data types as well as uh, line types. And you can follow the same procedure for point data as well. That's really easy because you just click where you want the point and you're not connecting any kind of dots.